Hello everyone, it's MCU crew time. We got a, a, a new a new format thing. I, I don't know what we're doing. This is all a test. Jesse, tell this them about is, the test. This is a test. Tell them about the test, this Jesse. This is a test of the emergency MCU system. This is only a test. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, <yeah. laughs> I I don't remember that that the last I was with you until the last one, Jesse. I don't remember oh, yeah, that. The from, is to wake people up. Oh, that wakes people up. Okay, you got to get the Ooga. Yeah, it's got to be in there. Got it. Got it. Uh, or, or you do the Death Star up. alarm. Uh, uh, oh uh, yeah, the Death Star uh, does sound like it's dying. Yeah. 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 The Death Star sounds like a seal like crying for help. Yeah, it sounds like uh -huh. it's actively dying. Yeah. Really? I does it? Yeah. Yes. No, it sounds yes. like a death whale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh -huh. like kind of disturbing. Huh. It's I not like work. a klaxon. Like you think no, it would be a klaxon, but it's not. I'll have to re-listen. It's to the it. worst sound ever conceived in a studio anywhere. It's terrible. Oh. But <laughs> I don't know if I'd go with that, but okay. Uh, what are those people uh, uh, called? The the something artists. The they make the sounds for like movies Foley, and shows. The, 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 Foley, the, yeah. Yeah. What? Those I guys. wonder how the Foley the Foley artists made that weird Death Star sound. Oh, I I, I mean, know. I'm sure there's a duck. I'm no sure matter what I can we Google think, that. Let's see what they say. No matter what we think it would be, it's not it for sure. Death because this Star. is like when I learned how they made the T-Rex sounds in Jurassic Park. Fascinating stuff. Like you got those sound guys, geniuses. When you learn like how, how they, they make, make it? it's like a like a tiger noise and a but it's like four noises layered on top of each other. It's cool as shit. Uh, and yeah, that kind of stuff is very impressive. And if you ever get to go to like a Foley studio, mm -hmm. those people aren't paid enough. They, so, like, when you hear footsteps in a movie or you hear, like, a sound effect, after the movie's yeah. filmed, then some guys go in and, like, do it all. So, if you're in the audience right now and you have, like, a, like a movie you like, 90% of the sounds in that movie were done after the fact yeah, because it, like, wasn't picked up day of filming or whatever. Was the first Wild guy that stuff. did yeah, it called it's Foley? Impossible. Is that where they got the name I from? Don't know, I don't know why they're called Foley artists. <laughs> well, yeah, I did I, find... I imagine it's the, like, microphone... I did find that the uh, original Klaxon Star Wars noise is an old Klaxon from the British Navy that was uh, no longer used in 1950s or early 1960s. Uh, it was a collision or evasive action alarm. So there you go. Uh, and then this one also says, Star Wars sound designer Ben Burt created the sound by combining the transformer hum from an old projector with the sound of interference derived from passing a microphone behind an old cathode ray tube television. That also sounds maybe more likely. Maybe it's a mix of the two. I don't know. I'm sure there's a huge documentary that we can all go read about. So, uh, all right. So I found the Jurassic Park stuff because it cracks me up. It wasn't a tiger. A T-Rex noise is an overlay of... The sound guy's dog with a baby elephant, which is wild. Great. But then my favorite one, Velociraptors in Jurassic Park. I'll give you each one guess. Where does the sound come from? Velociraptor. If I'm honest, I can't. Is that, are we talking about like the chirping talking thing? Like the dudes that like, yeah, and they it run does around like a, and they're like, ooh, 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 doesn't it? Doesn't, uh, doesn't, isn't it? That called, noise, yeah. 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 Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think it's from a cat throwing up in the middle of the night. Good guess. Fun guess. Any ideas, Bronze? Any guesses? I it's to me it sounds like a bird call. Like for a stork. Oh. The real answer is so much better. It's the sound of tortoises mating. 
Okay. I can, I can, uh, sure. <laughs> it really is. They literally got tortoises banging and then probably like pitched it differently. But that makes sense. Uh, uh, so now that sound is uh, horny turtles. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, tortoises. My bad. Tortoises. Yeah. Sure. Makes sense. Well, Jesse, how about this yes. for a transition? Speaking of horny turtles, they're going to go man. wild because Steven Yoon is joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What? As someone. <laughs> he's going to be in Thunderbolts, Jesse Cox. We don't know who he's going to be playing. People believe it might be Amadeus Cho, perhaps. Who is, uh, I don't know much about him. He's a comic book character. He's a genius. Who's a genius. And that's. Who's the Hulk? Wait, he, he is the Hulk? Yes. Amadeus Cho is the Hulk. How does that. A -Hulk. He's a Hulk or the Hulk? Is he going to be like. It, it depends on which version of the book you're reading, but he is a, I guess you could say he has Hulk powers is the easiest answer. For okay. That. Okay. He's a. Very smart individual. He's one of my favorite iterations of the Hulk character. Well, um, you might begin. And him. usually hangs out with uh, the champions. So you oftentimes see him with young Cyclops, uh, Vision's kid, um, uh, the young Nova. Um, okay. Uh, Miss Marvel. That's yeah. He like that's the group. So if he he's a younger, always, if he's a younger yes. person in the comics, he's definitely going to be playing a different version of him in the film. There's no way he's, There's a, he's playing his, a, his name is Braun is who that character is called. His Hulk persona is Brown. How do you spell that? You know, like the, uh, like, stat. B oh, like R A W N. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, he'll either be playing so that or something like the Sentry. We don't really know, but Amadeus Cho makes yeah. sense. I don't know if I could see Steven Yeun as uh, is a sentry. That would be. <laughs> He's, I love him. He's totally ruined for me because of Walking Dead. What? Like Why I is just, he ruined? What? Know, something about something about his character. Like I just wanted. I wanted more from Glenn? his character, and it like. Yeah, Glenn is one of the best characters from The Walking Dead. What I are think, you talking I about? I think he is one of the best characters as well, Jesse. I think this is a two to one. Democratically, I don't think he's a bad you character. I just wanted more from stupid. his character. <laughs> I think The Walking Dead just is stupid. Oh no! Best. Okay, now I'm back. Democratically, okay. you <laughs> are correct. Yeah, like I think if that's Walking what Dead's you're trying to say, that's different. But in The Walking Dead, he is one of the better actors and characters. Sure, The Walking Dead just yeah. just like after the first two seasons is hot trash garbage. Sure, okay, but have you seen? Have you seen? Nope. And did you see his character or no? Oh, yes. No, 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 no. The man's a fine actor. Minari, zero is. Problems Minari. With him as an actor. Minari is incredible. Yeah. yeah. Minari was I'm incredible just saying, too. Like mentally, that man deserves all of the flowers. Mentally, he is always Glenn for me. And I just like, for some sure. reason, Glenn okay. doesn't translate to superhero in my mind. I don't know why. Well, I don't know why. Did you watch? I think, like there's two actors or three, I should say, that to me look very different from when they were young. Pedro Pascal. He looks sure. very different from when he was young. Dev Anand, I feel like when he was in Slumdog Millionaire versus Green Knight, doesn't even look like the same dude. He, he sure. had a huge glow up. And for sure. me, Steven Yun, like, yeah, he, he, to me, he looks very different than when he did when he was Glenn. He What's is he looking like to right me, he now? Has, Let's see. Looks more like a, like a dad, you know, like this he looks was, older. Uh, all of his photos are young, so I'm. This was the photo they used on the Deadline article uh, of him joining the MCU. So it's whatever his publicist. Uh, uh, it's from the thing is he courtesy narrative like PR. This is what they sent. That's him. Yeah, but that's like a young. You that's like a... In, yeah, if you see him now, he's got longer hair. He's got facial hair. Um, he he looks like he he looks more distinguished. Does that look to me looks like an old photo? Mm -hmm. let's see steven let's do some I'm looking at one search. now where he looks like he looks great he looks yeah he's, he's he's clearly killing it he's definitely gonna have to well unless he if he's playing sentry he's gonna have to buff up but if he's playing abadeus cho i don't think he will have to i think he could just kind of go as is and be fine but sentry's like sentry's yeah. basically superman right like 
I think it's Amadeus Cho because isn't isn't Cho a Korean American? I believe so. I don't. Oh, I don't like, want to confidently say yes. Even but. is the perfect. So that's like a perfect casting. Yeah, yeah. I. I. That's why him as Sentry is a little bit of a stretch. But I think it'd be fine as Amadeus Cho, and it's a character that I don't think has outside of comic book fans doesn't have that much significance. So they can kind of mold it into an older character rather than like what a 13 year old or a 10 year old, like he is in the books. Like he's really young. Uh, so they could, they could age him up, make him make that, sense for the, the actor. Are either of you worried that there's just so many moving pieces in Thunderbolts? Like, Oh, oh yeah. always. Yeah. Yeah. Level that. Film. yeah. Oh, Harrison Ford's in that movie. Yeah. Jesse Cox, he's playing a red yeah. Hulk. Harrison Ford is going to be so in a fucking much going on green screen suit. I was uh, uh, I was reading this guy posted a, a thing on Reddit on the in the Marvel section about uh, Thunderbolt things that just like annoyed him in the movies. You know, the Marvel fan rant. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them one right of now. That's hot, up that, hot thing. Yeah, one of the things we like it stuck with me because it is a valid point. He was talking about Black Panther two, and he said that the addition of Ironheart as a like character that they would have gone to say, like meet her at college and done that scene. And that would have been like the end of her character as like a see you in the future, important character. But to have her included was just another moving piece in the movie that already had a million moving pieces in it. And I keep thinking like, that is such a Marvel move right now where like they could have before they would add a character and they'd be in the movie for like five minutes. It's like, Ooh, I can't wait to see what happens with that. And now it's like, oh no, there, there's an arc with that character in the movie to set them up for another thing. Yeah. So we don't have to do the origin they, there. They, that's and exactly like, right. They started piggybacking origins in films where that character's origin isn't the main plot. Right. And so then they can do and another it, film with them without explaining the origin. And, and, and in their mind, it's like saving time and whatever, but it makes all movies and you can, there are many movies where they do this. But uh, the one he was talking about, because he's like, he's like, I love Ironheart as a character. I don't know why she was in that movie. And yeah. I was like, you know, yeah. now that you say it, I keep thinking about that. Like, yeah, why? Well, it's, it's like, it maybe like it's doing the inverse now, right? Because yeah. now people go into her show and be like, that character sucks. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to yeah. watch a show with that character. I mean, and and then you have, for example, you know, Modok shows up, has an arc, and then is done. And you're like, was that necessary? Did we need any of that? Man. Could Modoc have been a thing? Do we have to have like a really ham fisted ending for that character? Like, Modoc okay. was all over the internet this week because the I think was it the Marvel Studios Twitter just straight up was like tweeting key arts. Yeah. From Quantumania. Yeah. Cause man, we can get in the Quantum. Whew, we are in there. We are seeing some things never before seen uh out of Marvel Studios right now. Uh, they are breaking all kinds of the wrong records uh, <laughs> with that film. I think it had the yeah. the lowest second week uh, for any Marvel film ever um, in terms of just ticket sales. So that's that. Uh, I think if you go to like the Marvel Studios Twitter right now, they, they do have the banner and the pinned tweet for Quantumania. Uh, and they have a tweet from the 26th. But everything else is talking about Black Panther 2 winning different awards. Uh, the, the marketing is, is kind of wild. They also tweeted out in a weird way, uh, maybe not a weird way, but they, they had character posters for all the characters from the quantum realm. Like the side. Yeah. The side characters, the characters that, that like, was like, so did they get feedback that like, Hey, people, audiences were like fans of these characters. Maybe you guys so, should tweet them. So people, I don't, I don't know. It was, it was weird. I think they just. Because it's out now, they can they don't have to worry about spoiling maybe certain things. And so they're just really I I don't know. But I will say I think it is fantastically ironic that the two big these are important foundational movies for what's to come have been such giant flops. Eternal <laughs> that, that, that is an official oh. image. By the way, Gomez left. 
He was like, you know what? I can't be around that. <clears throat> and I respect that. What's what's crazy is is again, Eternals and this like Eternals was the phase five setup. This is it. And that movie bombed, and everyone's like, let's let's forget that. And then this movie is the setup for the next villain, and it has not done well. Do you want to know what makes me really sad? There was a joke in Modoc where they showed the voice actor's face. I cannot think of his name right now. So Pat Oswald. Pat Oswald. Yeah. They showed his face in an app in the Modoc suit as a joke. In episode how nine, it yeah. Looked. yeah, 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 and it looked like Quantum Mania Modoc, and I almost cried. Like I, I swear to God, because they made a joke I, about like it makes you look like puppets, <laughs> and I was just like. But fam, was, they put uh, that in the movie though. Like it, they they took that and they put it in the movie. You're 100 percent right. They they real life. Uh, they basically took like Oswald Patton Oswald's face, and then kind of digitized it, but not. It looks exactly like this, but it's be- yeah, not as uh, airbrushed is how I would say it. Um, yeah, but like. I this just looks terrible. And it's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke in the show. Yeah. 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 And it's like Marvel saw that and was like, guys, what if we just did that? <laughs> yeah. Uh speaking to uh Quantumania, uh the direct reports it was already expected that Ant-Man uh, the Wasp Quantumania would have a terrible second weekend drop after it's Thursday at the box office. But it could set a record for the MCU. Initial projections for Quantum Mania were certainly the highest for the Ant Man franchise, but it, uh, it only met the low end of those expectations. It didn't help the film had many bad problems working against it upon release. Uh, the historic drop was, uh, according to Luis Fernando, uh, the film was projected to gross thirty two point two million on its two sorry on its thec- second three day weekend in the United States, meaning it would be a sixty nine point seven percent drop from its opening weekend. Uh, if the projection holds true, which I think it did, uh, it is likely uh, it would make the make it the biggest second weekend drop ever for any MCU movie, while also making it the biggest second weekend drop for any superhero movie with a hundred plus million budget. The other ones being Black Widow, which was sixty seven, and Thor: Love and Thunder, which was sixty seven. Keep in mind that I want to say Black Widow was wasn't that during the height of COVID, or like. Yes. When when film when theaters were reopening yeah, it was. in the middle of COVID. It was one of the yeah. ones that had a joint release, right? I believe it was one yeah. that came to uh Disney Plus and theaters, which is why Scarlett Johansson sued over it. I remember That's that was right. Like a big she wanted the Disney thing. Plus, yeah. I remember so that. So that was one of the few that I think had a week staggered release. It wasn't a long there wasn't there wasn't a huge window between it coming to plus. So, you know, that affected the box office numbers too. If people can watch it on plus. Yeah. Yeah. And then like pick an actor or actress from the film, uh, because they were asked at different things about their character and about the film. And everyone was on the defensive. Uh, you had, uh, Jonathan majors who was, uh, commenting on different criticisms of Kang. You had, uh, Evangeline Lilly, uh, commenting on uh, the wasp. And I mean, she straight up said, uh, hope is an odd enigma for me. The truth is that I find it harder to know and understand hope than any other character I've ever played before. That was back in 2021. Um, I think in the newest film, uh, she says, I do think this film was the closest I came to feeling like, oh, I think I get it. I have one word now that's become my anchor to help when I feel a bit lost with her and I just don't know where to put myself. And that word is the bullet. So she said that she now realizes that there's an efficiency and a sharpness to Hope Van Dyne. And yeah, uh, and admit that her character doesn't change a lot in Quantum Mania. So like, she's just flat out there saying like, yeah, the Wasp kind of doesn't do much. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't a story about any character stuff. Like I know they tried to put in a whole like dad daughter thing. And a family thing. They marketed it as such, yeah. Truthfully, this movie isn't about any of that. It's about no. uh, the mult, like the lower levels of the multiverse and the learning about Kang. And the Ant Man story is the bookends of that to like give us this digestible Kang. 
But it's not like I don't know if you guys saw the VFX stuff that came out. I did. Where, yeah, let's talk about that. This is like, I don't know, a few days ago. Yeah. Where straight up everything we've been saying completely accurate apparently. But um they uh they I'll talked find an article of VFX people. You introduce it, yeah. Yeah. It's all over the place. Vulture, IndieWire, everyone has these these they're talking to people and basically they're saying that Ant-Man was second fiddle to Black Panther. Black Panther got all the money and the resources, which makes sense considering that this was like we're billing this as it has to be a good movie. Um and so Ant-Man got second fiddle and then one of the things that I absolutely like this is just a quote. I'm just going to read it because this sums up how I felt about this movie. We talked about this, how it looked like some things were reshot or weird. Um, yeah. This guy says, certain things were used to cover up incomplete work. Certain editorial cuts were made to not show as much action or effects as there could have been, likely because there just wasn't enough time to render everything. It really didn't feel like certain scenes were trimmed or otherwise altered to save money, time, or cover up the inability to get it done. And that's, I mean, that says a lot to me. Yeah. And it makes sense. It, there were moments we were just like, again, there's some things they do and it's very easy. You can see how they cover up stuff, but it still never looks right. It drives me crazy. The, um, the writer for the film, uh, Jeff Loveness, uh, was interviewed by fandom or, or was asked by fandom uh, about the film. Um, and he said, uh, he was asked about the ending said, quote, I kind of love the ending that we landed on. I hear what people are saying, but I, uh, I feel if you just left, uh, if you just strand Ant-Man in the quantum realm again, which is kind of what Bronze was saying was that there was reshoots there at the very end, uh, that is exactly what happens at the end of the second movie, and the way out of it is exactly what happens in Endgame. Uh, the director, Payne Reed, added uh, that he loved the idea of Scott being an open book. At the beginning of the movie, contrasting with his family, who are all keeping se secrets from him, um, he elaborated that, uh, there's many secrets going around the film. We talked about that being a bad thing, uh, in a lot of ways where like, uh, Janet just doesn't have enough time to tell you why she doesn't have enough time. Right. <laughs> like that type of yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. it's everyone's on the defensive. Uh, here's I, I another think right quote, now. uh, about it as well. Uh, for Ant-Man, there were a lot of editorial changes happening towards the latter third and fourth of the project that were just too late. Yeah. There's a point of no return. Why certain things were changed, why certain notes were nitpicked longer than they should have been, that's on Marvel, but it definitely did a lot uh, did a lot to cause a lot of tension, turmoil and weight on everybody. So yeah, it seems like like I you mean, were saying there's a you, lot of last minute if you changes. you look at that final scene, it just it feels tacked on. Like it does not yeah, it feel, feel like right. it was planned to be there. And I know like I I sounded a little conspiracy theorist at the <laughs> end, but they literally show them walk away, look at the sunset. Like, like it, it seemed like they had all the establishing shots of like, okay, this is the end. And yeah. then a random portal opens that matches Kang's portal. No, dis no discussion of how this portal was made or created because there's actually something that um, contradicts the ending at the beginning of the film when Janet expresses her discomfort with them uh, making contact with the realm. And she's like, oh, well, it's just like a satellite. It's just sending out a signal. She she doesn't say it can open a portal. In fact, they're all acting like Janet's being um, overreacting because she's stressing out about it. Yeah. And then if it always had portal capability, I don't know. Like to me, it's like almost contradicted itself because they're kind of acting like there's nothing that's not safe about this. It's just a satellite. And it's like, well, then how did a satellite open a portal? And how long did that take Cassie? And has she always had portal technology? And why does her portal look at the same as Kang's that was made with an interdimensional battery? Like they didn't even, so it, it definitely feels tacked on. And then the yeah. tone of the end is weird because you can't tell if it's supposed to be happy but for me, it felt uncanny valley. Like I wasn't watching him whistling and going through the town and thinking, oh, he had a happy ending. He's such an open book. I was like, this is weird. It <laughs> like, was watching, very weird. I was like, yes. Weird. Yeah. Like I don't feel excited about his. I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop because it felt 
fucking weird. And then the other shoe just doesn't drop. Right. So it's, it just ends. Yeah. The, the film ends and that's but the, a feeling of uneasiness for sure. I was the waiting VFX for the Raimi, problem. the Raimi esque third eye to like open. I, yeah. I, was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, there's going to be something fucking weird that happens because this is such, even that such a VFX weird sucked. The eye oh, that was, was horrible. Gar- like, the eye was so bad. The eye was so bad. But this bad. goes back to like them saying when they're interviewing these people about the VFX, they're like, look, we were making two films at once and priority was put on Black Panther. So Ant-Man was last minute shit. And that hopefully, finally, they learned their lesson with this whole, we're going to slow roll some stuff. I hope so. Because that's the only way this makes like, look, I please the, use your brains. Yes. The, like it. Money changes a lot of things, and I think you know we've seen we've ta- we talked about how little money this movie made, and so hopefully yep. that makes them kind of th- realize like fuck we need to slow down, what? and and get this yeah. shit situated, and also pay What's our crazy? fucking artist what they're owed, right? Like <laughs> there's an in- a- this is th- this is I have to find the link. There's an interview where they're talking with a guy who was talking about the working conditions doing VFX for Marvel, and he was like, look, Marvel's a huge machine. They can get whatever they want, and you have to listen because they're they're huge. They're big. It's Marvel, then Disney. Like, if you want to work in the town, you just do what they say. And he's like, the problem is what they say sometimes is insane. And he's talking about an Ant-Man shot they did where it's Scott running. And he's like, so we had to create from scratch without any vis- Ant-Man running. All they They could have shot two minutes of footage. And instead, we spent like twenty weeks trying to animate this shot of him running <laughs> yeah. to make it look like a normal person running. And he's yeah. like, "What a giant waste of everyone's time that was!" But they just wouldn't do it. And I'm like, "That it, yeah, you can tell when things like that happen because then you'll see like once the fifty Ant Man running or whatever, you can see like just how ridiculous it kind of looks. It looks it's, yeah, yeah. It's it's the same thing with uh when you know when She Hulk." Like she Hulk looks great sometimes, then sometimes she's in her business suit, and you're like, "Bro, that is 2004 level graphics. What the <laughs> hell?" Yeah, yeah, it's and definitely it's, weird. Yeah, well, it, it takes me back to like you know how um, some of because when we look at like the the pieces of media where VFX were probably the worst, you know, Ant Man Ant Man is up there. Another one for me was Miss Marvel. But I remember, like, and I, I, I found the interview while you were, while I was listening to you, Jesse, but, like, the directly, one of the VFX supervisors says that on Miss Marvel, um, you know that episode where they, like, have the whole veil and the veil is thinning and stuff like that between... Yes, yes. It, it was, that, that was a really between, ugly say, sequence. Between really what, tough. Bron, say, what, what's the dimension the called? Noor. The Noor. The Noor. The Noor. <laughs> Noor. No, no. <laughs> <Nor. laughs> um, and they said that was our big effect sequence. It was really short turnaround. We had, we joined late. Other vendors had been working on that sequence to look for it. So like this individual and his team were thrown on after another studio was like, we're leaving. Yeah. <laughs> Like in the yeah. like like other people that worked on it, and then they said we saw all the artwork and concept stuff, but the show itself uh, schedule shifted and changed, and some of the vendors couldn't stick around. So then they had to like just grab somebody else's work and try to finish it. And so he goes on to say it was a huge challenge because it's like, what is it? What does light look like that's pouring through a rift? Is it like a fire? Is it pyro like? And that's something they did not want. So like Disney shut that down. They didn't want anything that was terrestrial or of this world that someone could look at and say, oh, that just looked like fire. That was a lot of back and forth with Marvel to figure out what that was. And then we were in crunch time. It's funny because in other shows I've been on, you get really excited about a character or whatever that's got this unique vibe. But like apparently Marvel came back and said, they didn't want it to be compared to anything else. They didn't right. want anybody to say, this looks like it's from this movie or this looks like it's from this. And so the end result is what we got, which was ugly. 
Very because strange. that's once again like like Ant Man running. That's a crazy ask to be like, hey, you've got three weeks. Make something that looks like nothing on Earth and nothing that's been in any other movie. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> got it. What? Done. <laughs> yeah. What do you want us to do? It's very tough. <laughs> the fact yeah. the fact that it's during crunch too is even more insane. Oh, that's like, the worst. Right, yeah. Come up with come up with something. Well, do it in three weeks, and you're like, <laughs> and that was probably. What? That was probably during COVID, right? Like during work from home is when they were doing that. Because I want to say, didn't Miss Marvel come out was towards the though? end? Or do you think it was that close to launch? People are back in I the office. I think it was after. Yeah, I think it was after. You might be right. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, you might be right. I guess depending on where it was. But I don't like, know where the animators you, were. The reason I bring up that, that interview is like that, that back and forth must be maddening. Like I would be, cause it's one thing when you commission an artist to have a clear vision of what you want mm -hmm. and then go back and forth being like, oh, that's not really what I was looking for. I wanted it to be a more flowing, but yeah. it's another if they're like, we don't know what we want. Right, that's- But it's... whatever you did, we don't want that. We don't want that, but we don't we don't have any alternative. It's like, yeah. What the fuck do you want then? Well, that that's <laughs> like, as someone who's on. given that directive before. It's the worst directive to give because then yes. they're just like, well, what do you want? And that then the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> but yes. you're not going to say yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There's this yeah. great Reddit post, and I wish I could give credit to the person who made it. It's about music, but same thing is with all instructions when it comes to things in this industry. The I, it, it was like, hey, if you want music for a game and you want to hire me, here's things I need from you. And it literally is just like 18 tweets of just like step one, step two. Step, and it's things like, where was it used in the game? How long is that scene? Yeah. Why do you want this thing? Like, what is the character? What is the mood? It, what is the, like, it, what's the game? Is there anything you would like similar to it? needed to it's, loop seamlessly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 That just it's comes from management. Those are just questions that like a manager Absolutely. should have and know. And if he doesn't, then that means either someone higher than them. Sorry. If, if they don't, then someone higher than them doesn't have that answer either. And so it's probably just like a, a domino effect of like. And nah, commissioning people takes work, you know, like yep. whether it's like, you know, dimension 20 coffin run, or now that I'm doing this sequest, you'd think, Oh, you have an art department now. So that means my job is done. No, I have to create reference images, especially if it's culturally specific, color palettes, like lookbooks, because it's completely unfair to go to an artist and just be like, I, I don't know. And, and I know people are so hesitant to reference other stuff. Sure. But you need to. Yeah, that's the like, best way to get stuff done. That's yeah. the best way to be like, oh, like, There's... you know, we're going for a Star Wars vibe you know, but more neon colored. Mm. Yeah. Like, I don't know why people are so offended in referencing stuff. That's how you pitch most things. Yeah, you most say things get also like as this other thing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. In most media. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a comment here that I just want to read. Cause it goes back. Uh, Riccone said, I was actually more disappointed by the cinematography than the VFX. Cause I really liked and and two, how they capture the shrinking and the growing. And here's the thing going back to what I said at the beginning. The reason why the movie was edited the way it was, and we missed some big moments, is because that, like that one VFX guy said, working on the movie, they simply had to cut stuff because they couldn't finish it, or it looked so jank, they were like, all right, we'll just cut around it. So yeah. a lot of the things that you miss from the first two movies, they simply couldn't get it done in time for this movie, so they just, and put it together. And that, it, the movie feels that way. It feels like scenes occur, and you're like, the back half of the film <laughs> definitely why? does. I, yeah, the opening of that film has those like wide open shots of of the the areas, and I thought that looked really fucking cool uh, on the big yeah, screen. But like you don't see been, those after like yeah the first thirty minutes. I feel they're like, gone. I feel like you spend a lot of time in Kang's prison hallways just because it was easy. You well, spend a lot of yeah. time in Kang's little prison hallways. One hundred percent. It's because they use the uh, whatever the the Mandalorian room bullshit. That, I forget yeah. the name. Whatever that thing is called, they used a lot of that for that those those shots. Did you know that my oh, what's crazy original is editor it looks good in Mandalorian. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. 
Like he, he, in some, uh, I, in a lot of parts, it does. Boy. Yeah. Yeah. But, but a lot of the time yeah. in Mandalorian, what they do is they'll use it. So like a great example is uh, in Andor, not Mandalorian, in Andor, all of Mon Mothma's residents, the sky in the background beyond the physical set was all of that. The volume. Thank you. That's the name of the thing. Mm. Yeah. And so it added layers to it rather than it just be like, I'm walking on a, like they built a set then built a thing around it. So like the skyline mm. of Coruscant could look cool in the background and be real-ish instead of CG'd mm -hmm. in later. Yeah. And that shit's, that works well. But yeah, after a while, like with all tech, a great example boy it might have been red letter meteor i'm not sure who did this but there's a great video where they talk about just like the simple concept of running is different and they show mm -hmm. here is running in star wars and it's very obvious they're on a treadmill of some sort and it's like here is running in star trek and it's the new jj abrams star trek but it's them like running down a hall and like run and it's like clear yeah, it's a giant physical movement blue is happening. room or green room or something like that yeah yeah and they're like it I doesn't can... at the end of the day you're still like yeah. a box and you have to like pretend to be physical That's yeah tough. yeah I, the more you can give actors the better it's gonna be and i didn't like so watching the newest season of stranger things i was like wow their cg looks so good compared to some Marvel movies and and like mm -hmm. I, I was really impressed. So I went and watched the behind the scenes stuff and they, they literally said everything that we could do physical, we did physical. Practically. So mean. like all the scenes in the, or sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the stuff that they could physically make. Yeah. So like they, they did all the practical effects. And so in the scenes where, you know, certain characters in the upside down running in like this much water, she was running in that much water. And so you get weird improvised stuff, like where she slips and falls on her hands and knees. That was improvised. It's because she slipped and they ended up using it in the show. So like you can't, cause it's, it just gives people more to work with. And I think this is also true of like, if you look at the Lord of the Rings versus the Hobbit, how is it the Lord of the Rings is aging better than the Hobbit and the Hobbit's newer? Because the, the Lord yeah, of the Rings, a CG's, lot of it was forced perspective. Yeah. Like they were just, they were using clever camera angles. They were using but weirdly even then, shaped people. But even then, Ian McKellen was like, it was the worst. Oh, he hated it. Cried yeah. on set. He almost left the film. But, yeah. But, and, and that's because he was working literally by <laughs> him. And so that shit does. I can imagine being an actor, sh getting in wardrobe and putting on makeup, and then you're acting across from a ball. Like, was that I in the wait, so like, that was in the Hobbit, right? That wasn't in the Lord of the Rings that stuff. Was that in was the in the Hobbit. Hobbit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they literally threw him a party because at one point he was so depressed. Yeah. So the rest of the cast came to his trailer and threw him a party because he was like, and at one point he said, "If this is what acting is now, I don't think I'm an actor anymore." Like right. he considered quitting acting because he had to act to a tennis ball. Yeah. No, I, I remember. And that you stuff. compare that to Andy Serkis in a flesh toned swimsuit, almost drowning in a river, just so Elijah Wood had something to react to. Yeah. Like the di the difference between the, the like sort of, you know, ethos, whatever you wanted to say, call it, behind how they shot the Lord of the Rings versus how they shot the Hobbit, like that's it. Because they literally, he like, they went in and digitally replaced him with Golem, but they still had him on set. Like, so they actors would have somebody to act with, you know? I mean, yep. it's the same. It's the same thing if you look at Star Wars and the prequels, because it's prequels are mostly CG sets, CG. The like yeah. tone of those films and the acting is very like we have to be flat. And if you look back at what was going on, a lot of the times they couldn't get crazy and do like crazy acting because literally they were like, you may it may cause the green screen stuff. Like you may like don't move around too much. You may cause problems for the CG editors, and you're like. Bro, that sucks. I can't even imagine. <laughs> well, I I hope the break. Uh, I hope whatever they're doing, uh, and the message that I guess audiences are sending them will have them at least go back and look at all that stuff. Uh, it seems like Guardians is in the can already, so we're not going to get many changes with that. Um, but that's a you know, in James Gunn we trust situation. Uh, and then I guess we'll see what happens after that uh with what disney plus and the marvel listen the christmas special looked great 
just one small request to James Gunn, just make that skin fold on that, like on on the on the head, the awful. mohawk. Just, it's awful. Just, just change. Oh, oh all that didn't bother me. That, thing that was sucks, fine, dude. That it, was fine. It makes me itch. It makes me itch. That it's like fine. I don't know why. There's something about it that makes Franklin. my skin itch. It's all craglin. But the thing is, I like craglin. But that the way his skin folds around the base of it, it makes me want to scream. There's something about <laughs> it that I'm like Ooh. super bizarre looking. <laughs> Absolutely. You I know? hope. I hope the it reasoning never... is that it's like freshly attached. No, and like, grafted. No, that, that, yeah, that, grafted. That, that, maybe that's the word for it. Yeah. Uh, he was on Yondu. I don't know if it's because he he was blue that it was fine with it. But the minute like a bald like white dude had like well because it looks it looks like, like human skin yeah it's it's oh, definitely like the it. idea that it's blue yeah without doubt yeah, I, don't I, like like, mm, I don't like this yeah you know how dark my mind is my first thought you could tell i've worked in medical because of this my first thought was he probably has to clean that with the q-tip like that like like it's the only thing i, I was Maybe. like oh that skin fold that's going to be a ripe area for like, you know, infection. Like he probably has to clean that. That's the plot of the movie. You know? <laughs> when yeah. people get elderly, they got to, they got to clean. You sometimes need help cleaning sure. between the folds. I'm like, he probably has to clean that. <gasps> Sorry. Yeah, ta I that's exactly right. That taser face is probably there. Give him a Q-tip, you know? Oh no. Yeah. Taser face blowed up, dude. He blowed up. Oh, that's true. He's gone. He's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, you guys remember when we were watching Hawkeye and we were like, man, I hope that musical becomes a real thing. They're definitely going to turn that into a new thing. Did we? Did, did we say that? Now was that us who did said? We say I, th that? I think that I was think literally. Turn this I think that was literally everyone like that watched that film. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, it's happening. Uh, it's a thing. Uh, it'll is be. It a Disney at, thing? Is it like you go to Disneyland thing though? It is. A, it's not a Broadway thing. Okay. I thought okay. you meant like a real Broadway. Okay. I was wondering. No, like, it's, bro. it's uh, a real life production of Rogers the Musical. Inspired by the in-universe musical shown at, uh, sorry, in Hawkeye on Disney Plus, is coming to Disney California Adventure at the Disneyland Resort. Set to debut this summer at the park's Hyperion stage, Marvel described the version of Rogers. The musical has a short one act all about Steve Rogers' life. Disney also released a teaser to announce the show, which showed Peggy Carter looking down at a playbill for Rogers the musical. You guys got to go see all it. All right. I mean... I think it's fun. Okay. Yeah. If it's one of those, it, it is the exact same level as the show where Darth Vader comes out and then little kids use their lightsaber to attack him. Is the it, that's the exact same quality. Yeah. So like, sure. All right. Look, it's an easy Whether thing to add, not, right? Like you just yeah. get some yeah. people, you give them a number, you get some lines, you put yeah. some music to it, and then you put them on a stage somewhere to Disneyland and you're good to go. Whether or not I go is completely based off of how long the line is. That That's really it. Well, I no. mean, if it's in like or one of the how, little theater things, then it is in California yeah. Adventure. So, or how drunk I am. True. Yeah. <gasps> I'm telling you, we Adventure. should do an MCU crew live from California Adventure, and we should drink. I mean, we should go during the Food and Wine Festival and just stream. I, look, as someone who's been like eight margaritas, as someone who's been to Epcot and done the like around the world or drinking around the world thing, being at a theme park, no, 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 all but drunk sucks. Adventure. It's just this bad adventure, idea. It's bad California time. California Adventure is way more chill than Epcot, though. It's, it's like way more yeah. chill. It's, you're still drunk. No one at goes a, to California Adventure. You're still drunk There's at the, a theme like, park. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's still the same core Yeah, but situation. think about it. I'll be like, take it off, Captain. <laughs> I don't want to be there. For, I'll be like half <laughs> oh, asleep. Yeah, like, I've, I've entered the age America's of. Ass. Oh, my God. I definitely will not be going now. It's a bad time. <laughs> Well, MCU Crew Live has been canceled. Sorry, Chad. Canceled <laughs> before it ever began. It's Jesse's fault. It's Jesse's fault. Blame Jesse. We went to Lamplight Lounge. Show us and what you're had... working with, Cap. Yeah, right? Jesse had eight margaritas, and this is what happens. Yeah. Be... You know you know what the best part is? Is when you go in the winter, and they have, like, the, the in the, like, uh, what is that? That place, there's, there's like, a... I don't know the name of it. There's like a like a something of Avalon. It's like a there's like a fun sort of like cantina location within that area. This is in the margaritas. That place is oh. fire. I listen. Oh. I like a margarita. I'm not I'm not a That's big great. drinker, but I love I love a good margarita. Margaritas are great. Yeah. They're good. 
That was my favorite part about your wedding, JP. I was like, margaritas. Margaritas were good. We had good margaritas. Oh, there. then we can go to that one winery they have there where they charge way too much for spaghetti, but screw that. And then get wine. You mean every Ooh. place at Disneyland? Because that every just, place. Yeah. All the food described. Disneyland is like way too expensive. Way too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Cox is spot in New York. They're going to start filming here pretty soon for <gasps> Born Again. Uh, yeah, they're supposed Charlie. to start. Uh, begin filming in February, so they they should be started. Uh, they said they're going to be spanning most of 2023 for that. So that most of has been scared. D'Onofrio scared me with what he said. Oh, about you how it's, it's not going to be the Daredevil we knew type deal. That's that scared me. I don't know, because him saying that, just it, coming from him, it it's not a positive thing. If it was coming from somebody else, you'd be like, oh, that's them hyping it up. Like, this is unlike anything you've seen before. But if it's coming from D'Onofrio, like a real artist, I feel like what it is is don't expect the Wilson Fisk who bashed somebody's head in with a car door. The, well, Wilson Fisk is the nice thing is we, we just spent a, uh, 30 minutes talking about visual effects. You don't really need visual effects for Daredevil. You don't need visual effects. You just need I like hope that they some punching. Don't skimp on the action choreography because he killed just, it with that. Uh, but just you gotta the, know uh, that took time. Get the uh the winter soldier folks and, and put that in there. That'd be good. Yeah. They could do good with that. You say some that, of the best fighting I'm... I've ever seen is in Daredevil. Like out of Western media, like in the Marvel stuff we've seen. Daredevil fight scenes go crazy. Yeah, get the Iron right, Fist. But that's not no, this don't Daredevil. get the Iron Fist guy. Don't get the Iron Fist guy. What do you mean? That's not this. What do you mean, Jesse? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Pause. I'm pause, saying what? that that D'Onofrio, all those fights are cool because there was no restriction on what they could show. Oh, you mean in so like blood and whatnot? Visceral, and it got to be like, oh, we're fighting in a hallway hey, again. But, Let's uh, go. Remember, and there got to <clears> like him beat up. Remember the end of Quantum Mania. That fight where uh, you know they don't have powers, there's no CG, and we got a, a ripped uh, Jonathan Majors like stomping on Ant Man. That was a pretty good fight. That was barely a fight, though. He beat the crap out of Ant Man. That was barely a fight. But was still, it, but it was good was choreography. Can't fight back. Yeah, yeah. It was still pretty good choreography. Anyways. Jonathan Majors sold that. He was oh, he did. so good. Yeah, that Those was the reason stops, why he's in like, my, my kidneys hurt. Because I was like, oh, you know, I was like, oh, that looks like it. Oh, that looks meaty. It was definitely one of the meaty. better parts. We got 10 minutes. Let's talk some Modoc. Got those two final mm -hmm. episodes. We finished up Mo the show. Uh, did anyone feel like episode nine was the like, we're not making any more of these episodes? End? Yeah. Yeah. Like that. I, that episode nine must have been the last episode they made. And then episode 10 was what they originally wanted to end with. Am I? I don't know if I'm an asshole for saying this, but like, does anybody care about the lose? No, I love their character. I think they're fun, but I don't care about them. Like but the I love. I love the characters. About the lose. And I was like, they were like the plot point, yeah, of like why Modok and that whole thing was weird because that we like even how it ended, even how the thing fully ended. We knew there was. I knew there wasn't going to be another season. Right. So I was expecting a finale, but then when they show him like he kills his family, but then he regrets it. I was like, well, this is this is over. Like, this is kind of yeah. It sucked. Like that. It honestly made the show worse because I knew there wasn't going to be any more. I, I completely agree. When we had our conversation uh, a few weeks back, where it was like, where is this show headed? Yeah. Like, what is the ending of the show? And Bron and we we asked Bron, we're like, is there like a ending? And <laughs> Bron's like. <laughs> once once we had that conversation i was like oh i'm gonna be so unfulfilled by this entire in experience yeah was that I right watched. you're yeah. totally right it's not yeah. like it's not an ending right it's just kind of like no. it's an ending where they <laughs> thought that they were going to make season two and episode nine was the episode where they're like we're not making this season two this is it <laughs> let's throw in all the goose yeah. here let's let's it, it, fuck it right <laughs> I do wonder uh, yeah, if, was, based on an gosh. earlier episode, they knew they were not going to get renewed, so they changed an episode. Like, I have no idea what the process was, but none of the endings seems like it was, we had a full season plan, and this is what we intended the season to be. Yeah. Yeah, the arc, the, the like, the thorough point, through point of everything was all over the place in those final two episodes, I felt. Yeah. Uh, even, like, character motivations was all over the place. 
uh it was very game of thronesy shit had to happen but it didn't matter why it happened and just they needed to get it done because this is the amount of time we have yeah and then they did like, the oh, like okay. let's let's bring back and this could have been you know done at the end of a season uh regardless of if the show is moving forward or not but they did the like let's bring back all the characters from this season remember those fucking weird aliens that like to party and just like turn everything into an origin or orgy they exist they're in our foot there there they are and then we're gonna have them untied <laughs> and and start doing some bullshit again but not really because then the other modok's gonna jump in and it was yeah yeah yeah, yeah. disappointing but like the I goofs were still it- funny the jokes were still landing I felt yeah I just think the series as a whole because of the way it ends up being it is the problem with a lot of and Netflix is I you know a lot of these like streaming services they'll develop a show give it a thing be like watch this and then cancel it before you've even had time to watch it so now you're like well why the hell should I watch it right. this is a perfect example of that I don't think there's a reason to ever watch Modoc. no no not at all <laughs> Not, yeah, no. Un- unless you like saw Quantum Man, you're like that character's goofy. I like Pat Oswalt. Let's watch the two of them do things. Then maybe, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Then maybe. It really, there's really no. Re- it's unfortunate because there's a lot of fun goofs, a lot of good jokes, a lot of the episodes. I was like, that was that was a good episode. But like at the end of the day, it's it really doesn't matter. It's yeah. a total. You could spend your time doing anything else. Really, I, I did like the the gravestone joke. When he's talking to uh, his friend that died, and then uh, the the wife and kid oh, the are guy behind from the beach. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the wife and kid behind him are like, "When are we gonna get a chance to talk to <laughs> our father and our?" That he's like, "You kicked my kid on the way here. Of course, you got here first type deal. Just some real, yeah, the melter. Thank you, uh, the melter. Mm-hmm. Just some real like messed up stuff. Um, but apart There's... from that, like, it was whatever. Yeah, yeah." It's it, that that kind of sucks because you're just like, oh man, I can't wait, and then there, there's nothing like, you know, yeah. I hate that. It's one of my biggest. That's the biggest problem I have is now when TV shows come out, I'm like, I'll wait like a season or two. <laughs> like I don't want to get caught up in some shit and then it not have a payoff, and I'll be like, those were twelve hours of my life I will not get back. Yeah, I'm gonna fight someone. So glad we watched it. I think it was a good watch with Quantum Mania and how Modoc mm-hmm. was in that film. Like it gave you a gave us a different portrayal of Modoc. Uh and for for my interest, I think Padden was much better. Uh definitely Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know. I suggested it because I suggested it based off of the fact that if you have absolutely no clue who Modoc is and you don't know why people are excited for the trailer. Oh gosh. Look at him. I think the, the the one thing that Modoc does a good job of as a show is a stab. You, I feel like you walk away with a broad idea of, oh, okay. He's this big evil gremlin looking dude that's got tons of technology and wants to kill Iron Man, right? <laughs> uh, and then you get what we got in the movie, which is that. <laughs> uh, you know what I realized? Uh, uh, Joe Doc, yeah, uh, Joe Joe Podoc. What I realize is if you go back to the image of him, what do you realize, Jesse Cox? Oh boy, oh boy. All right, Joe Podoc. Well, the thing, show a picture of him again. I just realized on his suit, this I hate this so much. The reason they included his life like heartbeat thing. For some reason on his suit there's no reason for it to be there the reason it exists is so that when he dies we as an audience know he died because it flatlines other than that it serves no purpose in the movie oh you mean why would he have that yeah why is it necessary i'm gonna gonna be right back okay yeah now did you did you happen to see the memes going around jesse from the end game posters about modok Cause that no. shit made me howl. Oh my God. No. So do you remember when, um, infinity war, it might've been infinity war, not Endgame. It, it kind of both. Um, but do you remember the tagline when they would show the like heroes that got blipped and then it would yes. like, uh, it would say like, never forget or like remember mm-hmm. us or yes, like yes, 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 yes. avenge us or whatever. 
Someone did uh, a like meme where it, it does all of the character posters that passed away, like Black Panther and um, I think Okoye had one and, and Peter Parker and Spider-Man had one and Quill. And then they did one with MODOK <laughs> that says like Avenge Us or whatever. And it was very fucking, I got to see if I can find it. It's probably pretty searchable. Uh I think it was, oh yeah, Avenge the Fallen. That's what it was. It was Avenge the Fallen. Look at this shit. It's gorgeous. It's this right here. (laughs) (laughs) It's so so stupid, but it's so (laughs) funny. His face is so goofy. It'll never not be goofy. Yeah, they they did a bunch of them too. They did this one. They they did like they just meme the fuck on it. Which, if anything, if that's all we get from this film is this, maybe this film's worth it. You know, maybe, maybe this film was was it gave it reason to exist. I want to see what bronzes oh, take so on this. Funny. That bronzes bronzes seeing it for the first time. It's very good stuff. What did I come back to? These are some Went memes that pop up. Best posters ever. Yeah, a lot. This is the other one, Bronze. Avenge the Fallen. Remember this, uh, <laughs> this like marketing when Infinity War yeah. and Endgame came out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so this is what man. they they were memeing on this shit. Thought it was great. Thought it was great. Anyways, <sighs> I'd meme about it, but I hate it so much I can't. <laughs> Two st- it's strong feelings. Strong feelings. Uh, let's do some shout outs and then we'll go watch the incredible Hulk. Uh, we're going to split these two VODs up. Uh, this one will go up on YouTube on its own. Still not sure if we're going to leave the rewatch on Twitch with Twitch chat. uh, I think that makes sense for that just to exist. I don't know if there's much reason to uh, put that up on YouTube. Unless we like make it its own thing. I don't know. I'll record it and we'll see what we think. Um, but we are watching, uh, the, the goof that uh, Jesse uh, figured out last week is that we're going from our rankings list, mcucrew.com slash rankings with an S, and we're going from the worst films on our top 31 or a 31 (laughs) list to the best films. And at the very bottom of our list is The Incredible Hulk. And I don't know, when was the last time you guys saw this? Over a decade. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a decade. Bronze, what about I you? I haven't watched. It. I haven't gone out of my way to watch this movie. I haven't seen it since I saw it. Whenever I, it was in theaters. Same. I have not seen it since it's come out. Okay. I I remember very little to nothing of it. Mine's been about three years. So I've I I've seen it the that. most That's recent. Cool. Yeah, I've seen it most recent. Anyway, do like some a, a complete rewatch of everything at one point. I I've, I've rewatched the MCU chronologically three times four four times three times something like that yeah so i've seen all the films a bunch but that was during when there was like you know mid-20s films uh now now we're in the 30s now we're in the low 30s with how many films well that's i mean that's yeah that'd be crazy 30 there's a shit 20s fine 30s crazy let's do some shout outs bronze what do you got going on where people check you out um hi hello uh i'm gonna be hanging out at penny arcade tomorrow so you can come check that out um uh working on some stuff this week but the big thing is is that i'm prepping to go to la so i can shoot this sequest uh we successfully crowdfunded it and so keep an eye out for uh for that show and in the interim um you know i'll just be panicking and storyboarding <laughs> Fantastic. Jesse Cox. What do you got going on? Oh, hey, Internet. Uh, Boy, oh, boy. If you want to see the stuff I'm up to, uh, head over to the old Jesse Cox on the YouTube. Lots of fun stuff over there. If you want to see a game that starts out basically a softcore porn and ends up being a horror game Uh that makes you question your entire life. Gentlemen's Gaming Club just did a review on it. It's great. Check it out. <laughs> and then um That game's really good, by the way. It's a genius game. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it lures you in just like a near game where you think it's about boobies and butts. Yep. And by the end, you're just like, what is life, bro? Yep. Yeah. So it's great. Love those kinds of games. And then um, you know, just streaming stuff and being stupid and uh 
Can't wait. Can't wait to if you want to if you want to know supreme suffering, JP, you'll understand this. I realized that I needed in order to get like the perfect Final Fantasy glam, I had to go back to Eureka. I saw you so were doing the, that this past. I tuned in and I was just like, what the fuck are you doing? I don't know why, but I needed the 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 lance because it looked good with the outfit, and I finally got it. Uh so who knows? Who knows what I'll do on stream? I have no no rules. Just right now, I I freed myself from one torture. Now I'm ready for more. God. Actually, this is why I think what I'm gonna do this week is there's a game called Ten Dates. Yeah. Where yeah, yeah. you like go on different dates. The Here's sequel the to five dates. Exactly. I want to see if I can approach the game, but only using advice given to me from uh bros on TikTok. So like go look up a bunch of TikTok like dating advice videos and then only use those tips and see how far that gets me. That's my plan. Hmm. You could yeah. just honestly do the like, hey, post in the comments nope. what we would we, we should choose. So then make it a really uh, nope. long play. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> sigma cox this entire thing. Okay, that don't it, you can't. That's not a phrase. Don't don't do that. It anymore. is now. It is now. Don't do that anymore. Uh, speaking of torturing yourselves, tomorrow I'm gonna be playing through the Destiny uh, new expansion, Lifefall. That launches. Uh, I'll be playing through that. I think Thursday, me and Max are gonna go through Sons of the Forest. Uh, that'll maybe be, uh, Gassy Mexican that is, uh, that'll maybe be Friday as well. Then we'll be jumping into, uh, Wolong, uh, Sequisha's on drop frames Sunday with, uh, myself and Co. Zeke is out. We'll try to find a fourth in that, uh, in the interim and let you guys know. So that's that for the MCU. Sequisha is on dropped frames. Sequisha's what? on drop frames. Wait, are Sequisha's you? Sequisha's one of five channels I sub to on oh. Twitch. But what if I ask yeah. him if he wanted to play D&D? You should do that. I am a proud citizen of Geshton. Okay, yeah, I'll ask I him. love Sequisha. I'll see if he wants to. That man is hilarious. I'll see if he wants to. I'll hit him up. Love that guy. We got real drunk uh, at Sacriel's wedding and split a bottle of uh, whiskey between me, him, uh, I think his partner, and Gears art. So that's my Sequisha connection. Oh, I love <laughs> Gears, too. Yeah. Wait, so each of you drank a quarter of a bottle of whiskey? Yep, of Yamazaki 12 that Shannon bought us. <gasps> bought me I love for Japanese traveling there. whiskey. It's good. You missed out. I, listen, I love Japanese whiskey, but if I were to have a quarter of a fifth of, of Habiki or any of those, I'd be on the floor because I am a fucking lightweight. It, it, got, it, it gets even worse, the fact that they had a... Jesse, uh, what is that face? <laughs> that's a gross face. <laughs> I've, I've drank with you. Oh, lightweight oh. okay it gets right. even worse uh bronze because <laughs> they had a they had a crispy cream donut bar at the wedding and so we were eating crispy cream donuts and whiskey oh, oh your that's hangover a, that's awful. your hangover that's awful. no i didn't no. have one bronze you didn't have one after having sugar oh gosh i can't yeah i can't do sweets when i'm drinking didn't have one bronze Thanks everyone for tuning in to MCU crew. We're going to be back. If you're watching live with the incredible Hulk and in like, I don't know, less than five minutes, go get your popcorn, get a drink, get some Skittles, all that good stuff. Milk duds, etc. If not, we'll see you next week for more. We're out of here. Have a good one. Bye-bye.